The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 13742 in the name of Donald Cameron on celebrating 10 years of BBC Alipa. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. Some members have indicated that they will make their contribution in Gaelic and interpretation facilities are available. Any member can listen by inserting their headphones into, <laughs> into the socket on the right hand side towards the front of the console. Any member unable to hear the interpretation should press the audio button on the console and select Channel 1 English. And I call on Donald Cameron to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to begin by thanking MG Alipa, and in particular its Chief Executive Donald Campbell, who encouraged me to celebrate this fantastic achievement uh, in Parliament. Um, and I should also say that this, uh, is be this debate is being streamed online uh, by BBC Alipa. It's particularly special that we should be celebrating um, today, because it is 10 years to the very day that BBC Alipa was formed as a channel, and it was launched with a live Cayley from Saw on Sky and a drama about Elvis. Um, looking around the chamber and looking at all the musical and dramatic talents, I wonder if we could match that tonight. But a lot of work went in at that point to achieve the goal of a publicly funded Gaelic broadcaster and an immense amount of work has gone on since then to take BBC Alipa from strength to strength. And not being fluent in Gaelic, I won't inflict what little I do have on the chamber, but I'm sure others will not be so hesitant, and I look forward to hearing everyone's contributions. Because in BBC Alipa, we have a broadcaster that has commissioned or created some £160 million worth of Gaelic television content and accounts for around half of independently produced hours for audiences in Scotland. Not only that, but one of its parent companies, MG Alipa, which I've mentioned, is responsible for 114 jobs in the Highlands and Islands, providing vital skilled employment in places like the Western Isles, Sky, Inverness and further afield. And in addition to this, there are multi-year contracts with eight independent production companies in a variety of genres, including the hugely successful Bannon, which is produced by Young Films on Sky. It is a remarkable achievement, considering all of this has been done with a modest annual budget in comparison to what other Celtic networks around the UK receive. They have done a lot with a little, and I will briefly return to the question of funding later. Yes, of course. Kate Forbes. Thank you. Whilst debates in English BBC have raged for years on a Scottish Six, for example, the Gaelic Eight, which is news on BBC Alipa, has been reporting regional, national and international news from the very heart of Gaeldom for years to an incredibly high standard with a fraction of the budget. Donald Cameron. I th thank um, the member for that intervention. I wholeheartedly agree. And having appeared on Anne La only on Monday night, um, it, it's a fantastic programme. Um, but um, I, I would say that it, the output of BBC Alipa throughout, especially its news output, is, is, is tremendous. Um, by coincidence, I was lucky enough to spend Monday afternoon uh, visiting the offices of BBC Alipa in Stornoway. And I spoke to a, a number of staff members. And they said several things which struck me and I'd like to share with the Chamber. The first thing was, that was obvious was that so many staff had been involved from the very start and were still there. And there appears to be incredible loyalty to the channel from its employees, which in my view is undoubtedly a, a good sign. Secondly, the fact that BBC Alipa is not just one single homogenous organisation, but is in fact a patchwork collection of producers, editors, presenters, some of whom act as independent freelancers. And thirdly, that the channel has been able to bring forward important local issues to the fore that simply do not receive enough national coverage. For example, we watched the production of a programme about the geese a crisis that affecting crofters uh, on the Eurists. And it's clear that while Gaelic is a central part of what BBC Alipa does, it's not just the language that it promotes, but a wider community and culture. It has obvious connections with the Gaelic-speaking world in the Highlands and Islands, but it is known to reach many more people beyond the Gaeltoch. Indeed, there are many who watch BBC Alipa who have no connection to Gaelic whatsoever. Let me give some examples. I have non-Gaelic speaking friends who have said to me that the only way they can watch their local Shinty team is on BBC Alipa. We know that, for instance, Scotland qualified for the Women's World Cup next year. BBC Alipa has been announced, uh, sorry, BBC Alipa announced on that very day a three-year deal as the home of Scottish 
women's football. Or there's the member of the Scottish Conservative media team, not known for his love of Gaelic, it has to be said, admitting to me that the only way he was able to watch his underperforming football team was on BBC Annaba, <laughs> due, to the, due to the channel's excellent coverage of the very lowest reaches of the SPFL. Yes. <laughs> that was David Stewart, and we'll now go to Donald Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll leave that hanging. Um, according to BBC Alaba, 10% of the viewers over the age of 16 uh, in Scotland watch the channel each week, meaning that many who do not speak Gaelic are accessing its content. Whether that be its coverage of sport, which I've mentioned, or pr viewers watching with subtitles, or simply checking out the original content, it is ultimately a door to Gaelic for a wider audience. And the recent agreement, which has secured the rights to broadcast content from CBBC and CBBS, further enhances the channel's offering to younger audience. Now, while there are a lot of good things to shout about, it goes without saying there are also challenges to overcome. There is wide acceptance that the number of people watching linear TV generally is declining, particularly among younger viewers, who more often than not use social media or catch-up services to view content. We all know about competition that comes from uh, major platforms like Netflix or Amazon Prime. And then there's the ability for people to use social media platforms and make greater use of popular websites and apps like YouTube or Instagram, etc. Um, now, all of this presents obstacles to all linear TV, but it's especially a challenge for a channel like BBC Alipa. And the other significant challenge, um, which I, I, I must return to, is funding. Because when I spoke to the staff in Stornoway on Monday, they told me that when new funding for content becomes available, hundreds of ideas are put forward, many of which are very good, but often only a small handful uh, can actually be realised. Now, at present, the BBC does provide the channel uh, with, with funding. It firstly provides additional net programme funding of 1.2 million per year, which replaces funding that the channel had received from MG Alipa, and that's freed MG Alipa to make extra investment in other independent parts of the, of the channel. And there is an overall BBC contribution of £10.7 million. But compared with the £74.5 million the BBC affords the Welsh language broadcaster S4C, or the £37.5 million Euros that the Irish government provides its language broadcaster, there is a stark contrast. And I, I would say that while the BBC does contribute a significant amount, it's important to acknowledge that support, that support, um, and in my view, they could do more to both invest in and support BBC Alipa. I will conclude on this note, Deputy Presiding Officer. Despite the fact that it is a 21st century create creation, working at the cutting edge of digital media, uh, using the latest technology, etc., it's also worth thinking about BBC Alipa more historically and how it fits squarely into a much more ancient Gaelic tradition. Because in many ways, the channel is the modern equivalent of the Seneki, the storyteller of old, who would entertain with history, song and verse, and would touch both the local and the wider world, shifting between fact and fiction, drama and real life. Just as now, BBC Alaba passes on the stories, the legends, the songs, the customs, rooted in the people and on the land in which they live and work. And those people, the listeners and viewers of BBC Alaba, drive much of the content rather than it being opposed from above. It is a service for the whole of Scotland and a standard bearer for a language and a culture that means so much to so many here, but also across the world. So to BBC Alipa, can I finish by saying, tarpaulet. Thank you. We now move to the open debate and speeches of four minutes, please. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Edward Mountain. Thanks to Donald Cameron for setting up this debate. According to the BBC Trust, it is BBC Alibus Remed to provide a mix of programmes, including television, news and weather. The, the channel ought to be making provision for speakers and learners of Gaelic, as well as people who might want to be learning Gaelic. The channel also ought to be a, a mirror and a support for, cul for culture, identity and Gaelic heritage. Since BBC Alba started broadcasting on 19th September 2008, the channel has grown and has addressed and met all these aims and objectives. Nowadays, it is offering six hours of programmes every day and an awful lot of people watch it with a reach much wider than the Gaelic community. 
For example, many people who don't speak Gaelic watch it regularly, programs such as Daily News, Yorba, Drama, um, concerts from throughout the world, and indeed sport has been a very important part of the channel. As a football fan myself, I am indeed very happy earlier this month to hear that BBC Ireland was going to be home to the women's football, Scottish women's football, giving and greatly raising the image of sport in Scotland. It is a privilege for me to speak Gaelic in, in our national parliament. But it is also a disappointment that some of the members are still against Gaelic. This is the reason that I am, I am trying to speak some Gaelic at this debate today. It is important that everyone who is supportive of the language and the, our culture defends Gaelic when people are demeaning it unfairly and unreasonably. We must not remain silent. I would like, if you're going to speak Gaelic, Intervention is in English because of the. Uh, They're going to take an intervention oh, well, because of Gaelic, I, I, but I'll, I'd already taken out my headphones. <laughs> um, but I, I do want to pick up on, on a very important point, and that's people's perception uh, of the language and, and perhaps the politics of, of recent has, has, has muddied those waters. Um, what, what does the member think could be done to uh, further improve uh, the take up of, of the language amongst young people and adults as well, outside of its traditionally spoken areas, including the central belt? Hear that. Oh, so Ruth <laughs> McGuire, if you, you can answer in Gaelic, I suppose. It would probably be helpful if I answered him in English. I, I think there's lots that everyone can do. I think there's clear cross-party support for Gaelic. It's not owned by one political party or one bit of Scotland. Um, we need to take that out of it. We need to take the opportunity to speak a little bit whenever we can, even if we're nervous about that. Um, in Jamie Green's region in the west of Scotland, there's a mountain of Gaelic activity going on. Um, you'll see through the North Ayrshire Council website, there's singing classes, there's adult speaking classes, there are conversational groups in Gaelic. I would say get involved and lead by example. Okay. <laughs> so, Kutramach, give it is important that everyone who is supportive of the language and the culture that defends the language, people are demeaning it unfairly and unreasonably. We must not remain silent. I would like to offer my congratulations to everybody at BBC Alaba for the making such an, the method, the effort they have made and are still making for the, to not strengthen Gaelic. I'm looking forward to the next 10 years. Call Edward Mountain to be followed by Alistair Allen. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd firstly like to thank my colleague Donald Cameron for bringing forward this motion celebrating the 10th anniversary of B BBC Alba. Presiding Officer, if my school teachers were here today, they wouldn't be able to stop laughing at my attempts to extol the value of languages in our, our society, especially as my school reports repeatedly stated that I should concentrate on English rather than try and master other languages that were clearly beyond me. Looking back, I could probably admit that I could single-handedly massacre the French language at school, and when I served in the army, I'd made a pretty good job of massacring Swahili and making it unintelligible, which is quite an achievement of sorts, given that Swahili whilst it has verbs, has no tenses. So if I happen to make a mispronunciation today, I don't mind taking an intervention in whatever language, as long as somebody can explain to me what it is that I'm supposed to be answering. And I, I would love to, to take interventions from those members of this chamber who are far more eloquent in speaking Gaelic than I am. As we celebrate the 10th anniversary of BBC Alba, it's noting, worth noting that 50% of Gaelic speakers live in the Highlands and BBC Alba forms a, a big part of their daily lives. I am proud of the enduring contribution my party has made to the language by introducing Gaelic Television Fund nearly uh, in 1990 and the Broadcasting Act in 1996, which further improved the funding of Gaelic Television. These two acts laid the groundwork for BBC Alba, which was launched in 2008. Now, this channel has viewership in excess of 60,000 speakers of the language, a testament to me to the wide appeal of the language and the programming and the growing interest in the culture.
Gallic production forms a sizable part of Scotland's growing TV and film industry, which, as we know, generated nearly £100 million in the past year. Production companies like the Stornoway-based Mac TV are important local employers, and that highlights how important BBC Alba is to the island's economy as a whole. And BBC Alba's sports coverage has come under criticism from some who wants to see the channel focus more on arts and culture. But I don't see why audiences shouldn't get live sports in their own language. Football, shinty and rugby draw in new audiences to the television uh, programmes on BBC Alba and therefore should be a gateway for the language. And let's not forget that BBC Alba exists to support the learning of Gaelic and alongside Gaelic education in our primary and secondary schools and acts as an engine for the growth of the language. Presiding officer, BBC Alba is a big success story for Gaelic language and I'm delighted to mark the channel's 10th anniversary today. Today's debate is also a reminder of the importance of the Scottish Government's target made 10 years ago to ensure that by the 2021 census, the proportion of Gaelic speakers is back up to the 2001 levels at the very least, and I would support them in that. BBC Alba will be central, I believe, in achieving that target, and I urge the Scottish Government to, to continue to support the channel and for people across Scotland to do the same. Thank you, President Officer. Alistair Allen, followed by Rhoda Grant. Presiding officer, thank you very much to Mr Cameron for setting up this debate and giving Parliament an opportunity to mark the 10 years of BBC Alaba. I remember 10 years ago when it was launched, I was at the official Cayley and I saw the first programme, a programme about Elvis as well. So from that day, BBC Alaba has grown and surpassed many milestones when the channel started on Freeview, for example. Nowadays, I, and as Mr Cameron said, nowadays I play is more and more important. This young generation has grown up without making any difference in their minds between the internet and television, and BBC Alaba recognises is that it is difficult to understand in a way that BBC Alaba didn't exist 10 years ago. Nowadays, it is broadcasting all sorts of programmes from history, Scottish culture, world culture, children's programmes, sport, sports programmes, news and now drama. Programmes like Yorba are dealing with international questions in a way that no other programme does in Scotland, in any language. And at one time, BBC Alaba was dealing with the same time, small, lighter topics. I remember one programme which was had researched prejudice against people with red hair. I was taking part in it. There, there is, BBC Alaba is a huge economic impact not just in the Highlands and in the Islands, but throughout Scotland. The Scottish Government puts in £12,000 every year, £12 million every year. And it's time that the BBC itself was paying more to make sure that there would be 10 hours of programmes every day, as happens in Wales, in SLC. Anyway, thanks for to BBC Alaba. The people of Scotland know that... Gaelic is there. I don't think that might have been very true in the days before BBC Alaba. And one thing that is encouraging about BBC Alaba is, and that is the support across the political parties. I need, must say that, that it is appointment when one or two people in politics or in the media go against this from time to time. As I said, you will still hear people complaining from time to time, uh, in a, perhaps that they saw or heard a word or two of Gaelic in their, in their lives and how that upset them. I, te television has played a huge part in the decline of Gaelic. I hope now that it plays a huge part in reawakening the language. And just uh, like a, having as a puppy is for life and not just for Christmas, Gaelic is not there just to be talked about in Gaelic. BBC Alaba understands that. In that vein, I am certain that I will be using some Gaelic from time to time in Parliament, not just to be talking about Gaelic, as I am doing just now. 
You will be hearing me from time to time asking questions, perhaps about health services or Brexit in Gaelic as well. Uh, uh, questions about funding. May BBC Alba funding. Uh, total total funding. I'm sure I will be raising that question about BBC and other services in Scotland. I am sure. And it is important that, that we are using Gaelic, not just as I said in talk with talking about it, but also for everything. Anyway, as long with everyone else, I will say again congratulations to BBC Alaba and every w good wish for the future. Rhoda Grant to be followed by Angus MacDonald. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I am very happy that Donald Cameron gave us the, an opportunity for this debate. It gives me great pleasure to wish BBC Alaba a happy birthday. It feels like BBC Alaba has been around forever, but 10 years is a relatively short space of time to make the impact that it has. It's been at the forefront of promoting the Gaelic language. Their, their carrying of sports, not just shinty, but football, as we've heard, rugby too, has promoted a much wider audience than the one that may have, been orig may have originally been set up to serve. But this encourages others to listen to our language and indeed gain an interest in it. It could be argued that the coverage of Shinti has promoted that game and led to more young people becoming interested in playing. The more people who watch BBC Alaba, the more that will be interested in learning our language and keeping it alive. They have a broad range of programmes for young viewers, Patrick Post, among others, um, working in tandem with Gaelic medium education to help young people learn. Their news and current affairs programmes, as we've heard, are excellent. Yorpa was historically recognised for its journalistic content even before BBC Alaba started broadcasting. For learners like me, speaking our language never goes out of date. And sadly, Rhoda MacDonald doesn't seem to have aged at all, albeit that her hairstyle has changed a number of times over the series. The channel not only serves our Gaelic speakers, but it helps learners and promotes interest in Gaelic. As someone whose first language was Gaelic and has now returned as a learner, BBC Alaba offers me extra, an extra connection to the language, a way of keeping my practice between classes eh, through a wide range of programmes. It enables learners, young and old, to have Gaelic embedded in more aspects of their life rather than confined to the classroom. And I've often heard people say it's when Gaelic becomes the language of the playground rather than the classroom. We know that we're keeping it alive. And while keeping Gaelic alive has to be the main aim, there are other unforeseen benefits to the channel. It has created jobs in the media, not just for Gaelic speaking presenters, but for every skill required, sound, film and production skills. It means that young people from the Gaelic now have a range of careers to choose from and the ability to stay at home to pursue them. One of the big problems in my region is depopulation, and that happens for economic reasons. People leave because there are few jobs and even fewer careers, and BBC Alaba provides young people with a career to pursue that keeps them in our community and gives them choices. Our language is also important to keep our history and culture alive. The history and culture of the Highlands and Islands communities is handed down through poetry, song and storytelling. And if we lose the language, we lose that aspect of our heritage. BBC Alapa also promotes those traditional arts as well as contemporary arts. And what is sad is that Gaelic was much more widely spoken in the past across much of Scotland and in parts indeed of Northern England. And it's been lost from those areas, and with it has been lost their culture and their heritage. BBC Alba's programming is of a really high standard and actually holds its own against English-speaking channels. They provide excellent value for money. 
but with more investment, they could do so much more. Um, and I would urge the BBC to look at a balance in funding to make sure that BBC Alaba gets a fair share of the cake. As Donald Cameron said in his opening speech, when money is available, the bids to produce new and innovative programming much exceed what is available um, cash-wise to pay for that. So I think uh, we need to urge the BBC to do that. Last New Year, my husband had the flu, so I was at home alone on front of the TV, taking in the New Year on my own. Sad. I tried a number of channels before settling down to a wonderful concert on BBC Alaba, very much like a traditional Cayley rather than the forced kitsch you sometimes find on other channels. While recognising its worth, we also need to make sure we support it. Duncan Ferguson wrote recently that BBC Alaba had done more to promote and protect Gaelic than the Gaelic Language Act, and he may be right. However, having a Gaelic Language Act may help us to pre protect and promote BBC Alapa, because if we take it for granted, we do so at our peril. Therefore, I'm delighted to support this motion and indeed hope um, that I will be wishing BBC Alapa many happy returns for many years to come. Kola Bri Ma. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Angus MacDonald to be followed by John Finney. More on time. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given my strong support for Gaelic, I would dearly love to make my speech in Gaelic this evening. Uh, however, despite coming from Stornoway, I do not enough Gaelic to do that. So I will continue in English. Uh, Donald Cameron for bringing this motion forward for debate today. Uh, I was pleased to sign it to help ensure there was cross-party support to allow this debate to take place in the Chamber. And I think the more Gaelic-related debates we have in Scotland's Parliament, the better. Now, I'm glad to say I was at the official launch uh, reception of BBC Alaba here in Edinburgh 10 years ago, which was attended by the great and the good of the Gaelic world, uh, the great and the good of the BBC and others. Um, but it was a double celebration for me because in my role as the convener of the organising committee of the Royal National Mod, which was being held in Falkirk that year, it meant the Falkirk Mod was the first one to enjoy wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the competitions and concerts uh, through BBC Alaba. So as well as the excellent coverage of the mods over the past decade, it's clear that MG Alaba, through its partnership with the BBC, is an incredibly important piece in our diverse cultural jigsaw. Tasked with ensuring Gaelic is accessible in our day-to-day -day lives through creative content, factual documentaries and drama series through broadcasting and online platforms, BBC Alaba is vital to the promotion, preservation and normalisation of the culture that is the Gaelic language, lifestyle and all that comes with it. So it gives me great pleasure to be able to celebrate the 10th anniversary of BBC Alaba here this evening. First launched uh, 10 years ago tonight at 9pm with Oran Alaba, a special version of the song Alaba. Uh, we've all watched the channel grow, expand and, uh, and diversify, changing with the times and making use of emerging platforms for content to be shared far and wide. Now, President Officer, 10 years ago at the channel launch, MG Alaba's commissioning strategy consisted of long-term volume deal commissions which bring the channel low-cost, high-volume, original outage and allows the independent sector to enjoy the security of guaranteed funding over a number of years, thus allowing for investment and long-term planning, gaining favourable deals with their own suppliers and providing employee security, and also seasonal commissioning rounds bringing higher production value, bespoke programming uh, to the channel, of which they had three tendering rounds annually at the launch of the channel. Ten years on, MG Alaba still have the volume deals providing 89% of the channel's original funded outage for 75% of the programme budget. Sadly, MG Alaba cannot now accommodate three commissioning rounds per annum due to financial constraints. They currently have two seasonal uh, commissioning rounds at a lower level of funding individually than the original three. And worryingly, these two rounds are in jeopardy due to the lack of assurance they have regarding their annual core funding each year. These commissioning rounds are heavily dependent on the £1 million pressure funding received over the past three years, a sum which, again worryingly, 
is not guaranteed and thus causes uncertainty and insecurity in the independent sector and with the supply of programming. So, as a result, we see a channel which has a 74% repeat level being in danger of losing not only its core audience, but the wider Scottish audience without a supply of high quality originations. Another issue of concern, President Officer, is the plan to launch a new Scottish channel. Now, clearly we all welcome a new Scottish channel, but the, the head of BBC Scotland intimated that this would bring a benefit of up to 100 hours of new programming to BBC Alaba as a direct result of the new channel. Now, I'm not sure how far down that road BBC Scotland are in that respect, but there's one thing sure. We need to safeguard BBC Alaba's current appreciation and consumption across the Scottish wide audience and ensure that the two channels work in partnership with each other and not in competition. I genuinely, genuinely hope the arrival of the new channel is not to the detriment of BBC Alaba and I hope we can get an assurance in that regard from the BBC. President Officer, time, as always, prevents Amy from raising uh, other salient points, but suffice to say, let's celebrate all that MG Alaba and BBC Alaba have done for Gaelic and sport in Scotland over the past 10 years, and let's all ensure we protect it over the next 10 years and beyond. One more time. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from John Finney. Uh, um. Thank you, presiding officer. Excuse me, I have a little Gaelic, as, but as usual, I have to speak in English. Alex, so I'm going to have to speak in English. And first thing I have to do is to congratulate my colleague Donald Cameron there. Donald talked about BBC Alpha going from strength to strength, and I think that's very evident from the contributions we've heard. And I think it's got a very tangible. Um, Evidence of that with a new TV gallery in Inverness. Again, Donald Cameron talked about Anne La and the fact that that entire production can take place from there. I think it's a sign of the progress that's been made. And of course, news is very important. News is very important. So I also welcome the, the, the weekend bulletins on Radio Nan Gale. And as, as others have very much welcomed the, the new, new jobs, particularly the, the new journalism jobs in Inverness, the, the, the six jobs. But as has been said, BBC Alp operates uh, throughout the Guild Act and uh, its, uh, its jobs and its spread, I think, are wel welcome. And it's always been very outward looking, as I hope the Highlands has always seen to be. So there's, there's many things to be positive about. I think the revamp of the children's output and particularly the, the, the utilisation of the CBBCs and CBBCs CBB's brands, um, which I think, again, is about the normalising the use of the language in connection with uh, 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 ev everything that goes on. Uh, job creation, of course, as some others have alluded to, is not just about the creative uh, uh, jobs. There are very uh, positive uh, uh, contributions um, from the technicians and, and, and other supports, and that's uh, all part of the wider progress that, uh, that's been made and the role that uh, BB Sal has played in moving things forward. Um, as the motion also talks about joint working, and I think that's very important with uh, always finite resources, collaboration is very important. And I want to perhaps, uh, and, and others have touched on this, and I, I don't wish to appear to be negative, but I, I think it's important to talk about the BBC Charter Review and the significant support that was uh, indicated in that during the public consultation for Gaelic. And, uh, um, the, the proposer of the motion talked about the modest budget. Uh, others would describe it as uh, an inequitable outcome to that uh, um, charter review. S4C are guaranteed 74.5 million per annum until uh, 2022. So I'd like to quote from an email I got from a, a constituent this afternoon that said, and I quote here, expecting BBC Alapa to survive, never mind thrive on something like 8.2 million, brackets from the BBC, while it has become clear that the new BBC Scotland is to have four times that budget to pro broadcast for fewer hours has highlighted the further inequity of the situation. So there's a call that this uh, um, constituent uh, puts, and I'm sure I'm not the only recipient of that email in it. It's a call to supporters of BBC Alapa, and that's to renew the call for a minimum of 10 hours new programming per week, calling the BBC and politicians to commit to this and the resources that are required to enable BBC Alapa to, Alapa to fulfil its role of offering a diverse range of high-quality programmes in Gaelic. So on, on a positive note, people have talked about... Um, the uh, dynamic nature of the media industry, and people have talked about not making exclusively culture, and who knows, uh, Yorpa's uh, often cited as a, an excellent example of very strong investigative journalism, and not just within Scotland, but the broad outlook it takes. Culture, of course, maybe in years to come, that 
people will view DIY Ladoni as being a, a, a pivotal, um, um, and for those of you who don't do DIY, uh, like me, it's, it's entertaining unless they watch it, um, um, and I commend it to you. I also commend, of course, the sports coverage, and I think it's very important that we don't politicise the language. The language is a very powerful role to play, and we know that with our uh, sisters and brothers in Wales, Catalonia and um, indeed the Basque country, and um, there's, there's mention made in the motion about the, the Celtic language and the recent partnership agreement. I think that could uh, contribute to positive progress and respect, for instance, for the Irish language in the, the north of Ireland. So there's many positive things to say. I'm sure the next decade will be the same. More than time. Thank you. I now call on Ben McPherson to respond to the debate uh, for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and uh, thank you all uh, for what I think has been an, an excellent debate and to Donald Cameron for bringing forward today's motion. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity this evening to express the Scottish Government's gratitude to all involved in BBC Alaba on its 10th birthday. So, first of all, I would like to thank BBC Alaba producers, presenters and commissioners and of course the BBC and the Gaelic media MG Alaba, who between them run the channel and for the creative work that they've produced over the last decade, which has made the channel such a resounding success as others have emphasised. Uh, Labre Sonagut. Happy birthday. BBC Alaba has been consistently inventive and continues to be so with its exciting autumn schedule and new developments in comedy and international productions. The Scottish Government is a strong supporter of Scotland's indigenous languages. We recognise their cultural, economic and social value and want the relevant bodies to work together as closely as possible to support and promote their use. Though there's still work to do to reverse the decline in the overall numbers of Gaelic speakers. It's encouraging that the rate of decline nationally does seem to be slowing down. And I think of this uh, in terms of a point was raised earlier about growth in urban areas. Uh, I think of uh, Ternaparka, the, the primary school in my constituency, whose ro role and numbers are growing from strength to strength. And that the Gaelic education strategy of this government in helping to promote uh, uptake uh, um, at school age. The, the, the growth and the, the slowing down of decline suggests that our targeted investment as a government is paying off and that the strategy of introducing children to the language as early as possible to make it an integral part of their life, their schooling and the way they communicate is working. BBC Alaba is an important part of that process in children's programming, in its digital content, and in providing a common frame of reference for the Gaelic community in its widest sense. In 10 short years, BBC Alaba has become an accepted part of the Scottish broadcasting landscape, and a celebrated part, with strong audience approval ratings and audience reach of over 10% nationally and over 65% among users of Gaelic. This is, as others have said, Good for the economy as well, because commissioning programmes in 2016 to 17 from 20 different production companies uh, is, illustrates, uh, as that illustrates. And it's especially important in economically fragile areas. Indeed, of the 280 full-time equivalent jobs, MG Alaba has been estimated to have generated across Scotland in 2016-17, over 100 of those were in island communities. The channel has also demonstrated that its innovative partnership model with MG Alaba and the BBC can work successfully. And in this, I believe the channel is showing the way to other broadcasters who are now realising the mutual benefit of partnership models. And as our new dedicated screen agency, Screen Scotland, gets up and running, one of its priorities is to promote a more coordinated approach to resources and more cooperation between broadcasters in the interests of audiences. The Scottish Government will continue to support the channel, although broadcasting is reserved, uh, and we, we will do that and continue to support so that the, the channel BBC Alaba is able to meet the challenges of competition and funding in the years ahead. Because competition 
will be stronger than ever. All broadcasters face a challenge from new media giants like Netflix, as the BBC Director General Lord Hall reminded us earlier this week, uh, saying that British TV, including the BBC, needs a more level playing field to be able to compete against global broadcasters. And closer to home, as others have mentioned, there's a, a newly invigorated STV, uh, and from next February, a new BBC Scotland channel. And we'll urge the BBC to stand by the promise held out in its proposal for the new channel to co-commission 100 hours of programming with BBC Alaba. As others have mentioned, funding is another key issue. We in the Scottish Government remain committed to funding MG Alaba with £12.8 million from the devolved settlement and with £8 million from the BBC and a further £1.2 million announced earlier this year, replacing the £1 million withdrawn by the UK Government, MG Alaba funding now totals approximately £22 million. And we as a Scottish Government were delighted to announce in February a £500,000 grant to develop the studio facilities at Seaforth Road in Stornoway to improve facilities for programme making and offer training opportunities for young people interested in the media. But public funding of the Welsh Channel S4C is approximately 120 million, which from 2022, following a recent UK government review of S4C, is expected to almost all come through the licence fee settlement. So the role of the BBC is therefore critical. We have argued that this disparity in funding between Welsh and Gaelic TV is disproportionate. And we urge the UK government and the BBC to take action to ensure that Gaelic TV audiences get a fair deal. Gaelic is one of the UK's, not just Scotland's, indigenous languages. And as such, it is reasonable to expect support from the UK government. And we believe there's scope for the BBC to spend more on Gaelic on grounds of equity. Even allowing for its recent enhanced commitments, the BBC still spends considerably less here than it raises through the licence fee. So we urge all to get involved, the UK government, the BBC and the communications regulator Ofcom to work together to ensure that BBC Alaba gets a fair share of the licence fee. We're also asking BBC Alaba be regulated through a service licence of its own. As we've argued, the BBC in Scotland generally should, so that the specific needs of audiences and the sector here can be identified and considered. The needs and circumstances of audiences in the various UK nations differ, and their circumstances should be addressed individually. Overall, we'll continue to do what we can to stimulate the TV sector in Scotland and argue for a fairer deal from the UK. We're grateful to MG Alaba and the BBC for the unique and highly valuable contribution made through BBC Alaba to the Scottish media and Gaelic and Scottish culture. We'll continue to support it in years to come and look forward to continuing to work with these partners to make the next 10 years as successful as the last, so that in 10 years' time, we can have another debate like we have this evening with even more strength to BBC Alaba. Thank you. That concludes the debate, and this meeting is closed.